Well, the first round of fixtures have been played and the results are in. If you want to check out all our results, go to our website, nefl.ie, and you can check them out there. We're going to have a look through some of the games and um, some of the footage recorded over the weekend. Thursday night, seeing Rossum play the early game in the league, the first kickoff actually of, the, of our new season, they took on Milmenta home. Here's what happened in this game. We joined the action in the second half. Millmount already won the up at half time. They started a brighter two, but just couldn't add to their goal tally. Moments later, Rossin awarded a penalty, which they converted to make it 1 1. Didn't stay that way, though. The mix up here on the defence, allowing Millmount forward Johnny Reynolds in. Bottom corner, no mistake. Millmount 2 1 up. Rossin pressed for an equaliser. Having a couple of little half chances. We couldn't add to the goals. Which meant Millmount ran out winners 2-1 on the day and got the season off to a great start. And we'll have extended highlights from that game posted on our website this week. So keep your eye for that. The other game on the night seen Johnstown at home to at Boy. Johnstown winning 2 1 on the night. Footage recorded by me, Daily TV, has been shared on our Facebook page, so you want to check that out. Friday night, good round of fixtures on Friday night, and if you had your coupon done, they're mostly all home wins, with the exception of one, the game we were at. RD opened up their campaign at home to Mahev No More, and Mahev No More under Jason McConville, our new manager, were looking to get off to a good start. Here's what happened in that match. Mahev Lamo started the game well, and winger Luke Gorman was causing the RD defence all sorts of problems. It was another run down the right which set up the force goal. Ball eventually finding its way to Vinnie Smith, who smashed the home from inside the box. Moments later, another ball down the right, this time leading to a penalty kick. Tina Malvena stepped up, only to see his shot saved by RD keeper David Anderson in the RD goal. RD's chances were few and far between. And it was be Mahev no more who would add a second when Mark Griffin finished from close range. Mahev no more were in control now and were probably guilty of taking their foot off the gas a bit, squandering a chance or two before Griffin eventually gets his second of the match to wrap the game up. We know Mahav no more. The last chance of the match would fall to RD, but it summed up the night as they failed to get any shot on target. <laughs> Great start of the season now for Jason McConville and his new Mahav no more team. There was also big wins in the night for Rock Celtic, who hosted Redeemer in the Dundalk Derby. 7-3 winners. We did say that was the one to look out for last week. Albion Rovers seconds also were recorded a 6-0 win at home to Park Celtic Summerhill. Also home wins for Drogheda Town, Kings Court and Navantown Cosmos. On Saturday, I was in the MDL grounds to see Park Villa seconds against Johnstown seconds in the Navan Derby. Let's have a look and see what way that game went. The Navan Derby was played in the sunshine on Saturday in the MDL grounds. Johnstown seconds versus Park Villa seconds. Not a lot of clear goal scoring chances in this one. Both teams trying to look from long range. Park Villa felt like they should have had a penalty when the winger was pushed over in the box. This is the best chance of the, of the first half, falling to the centre half. We need them falling to your forward. Class step over from Jimmy Bowling was probably the highlight of the first half. The goal of the game came in the second half when Bowling played great ball through to Marcus Bailey and the midfielder finished well from a tight angle. Park Villa won Johnstown Hill. That's how the game would finish. All three points and bragging rights going to Park Villa. Hey, 
Had end win now for Park Villa seconds over John's 10 seconds in the Sunny MDL. There was a total of 34 goals scored in eight matches on Saturday, with the biggest win coming from Clem Yo seconds with a 6 0 home win over Oldcastle seconds. There was a couple of seven goal thrillers as well. Enfield seconds coming out top over Albion Towards 4 3, while OMP seconds got the better of a Lord Celtic 4 3 also. On Sunday, I travelled a short distance over to Kenstown. And what a game, what a game to pick. OMP versus Kenstown. OMP took a lead, 3-0, and then Kenstown came back to somehow win 4-3. Let's have a look at the highlights of that one. The game started off at a frantic pace, and it'd be OMP to take the lead after only a couple of minutes. And a true ball found its way to keep McGibney, who smashed the ball home from a tight angle into the roof of the Kenstown net. They then doubled the lead minutes later when the ball made its way past everyone to the back post. A big Arnie, Arnie was there to, for a simple tap in to make it 2 0 with only five minutes played. It could have been three even a minute later, only for a great save here by the Kenstown goalkeeper. Kenstown did have a couple of chances. This one here cleared off the line directly from a corner. And another one after an amazing run before found his way in the box only for a good save from the OMP keeper. OMP then made a 3-0 from the penalty spot, Donald Callum converting and a look game over for Kenstown. Moments later Kenstown got a penalty of their own and David Bones was hauled down in the box. He dusted himself off, took the penalty himself, 3-1, game on. Kenstown second came via an error when the keeper misjudged the flight of the ball from a free kick. This lifted the Kenstown team who are now in control of the game looking for an equaliser. They didn't have to wait too long either. When minutes later a ball flicked on from a long throw in and found its way to Derek Bones who coolly volleyed the ball in from 8 yards out to level the game. Incredibly then Kenstown went in front. The new sign La Rivals was put through and goal by Bones and he made no mistake scoring on his debut against the team he signed from, from only on Thursday. This sent the line wild, but with eight or nine minutes left, the job was still not done. And OMP could have grabbed an equaliser in the last minute. Joe Garvey going close. But would finish 4-3 to Kenstown in an incredible match. What a great game to catch on camera. And congratulations to Noah Walsh and Steve Lab and a great victory for Kenstown Rovers. You can see extended highlights from all the games covered over the week on our YouTube channel, NEFL TV, and it'll also be shared on our website, NEFL.ie. And remember, if you're going to any Northeast Football League game and manage to catch any footage, send it in to me on the email address below, and we'll share it across all our social network platforms. Just having a look at some of the fixtures coming up for you this weekend. On Thursday night, it's all in the MDL. With Johnstown at home to Enfield and Park Villa seconds at home to Robinstown. Both home teams there looking to make it two wins in the trot. Friday night sees some big, big games Friday night. With some of the big hitters playing each other. Mahavna Moore looking to make it two wins in a row against Belorgan, who also started off with a win. Park Villa... Looking to come back after the defeat to Colts Celtic last week, they take on the leak at home. Well, the big two from last year, Trim Celtic at home, Tully Park, 7-15 against Boyne Habs. That'll be one I won't miss. There's 22 games to pick from over the two days of Saturday and Sunday. And some of the standout games from them would be Cork Celtic seconds versus OMP seconds in Meadowview on Saturday. Well, both the first teams face off in St Mary's Park in Navan on Sunday. Bay will also be looking to get their season on track with a home game against RD. There's a full list of fixtures as well in the Women's League on Monday night. 
with a draw to Derby of Albion Rovers versus draw to Town being probably one to pick at them. That's it for this episode of the podcast. Remember, if you're going to any Northeast Football League game and you manage to catch or any footage, send it in to me at the email address below. See you all next time.